Chapter 271 The Ethereum Citadel A year later, at the Shadowhunter outpost, it's finally the time, Maximus muttered with a frown. The launch of a new currency had more implications than he thought. Who knew that he would be besieged from all sides just because of it? Isn't it just a new currency? They could also create one if they want. Looking at the notification in front of him about the upcoming assembly, he could only sigh. Taking out his token, he quickly called three of his sons, Liam, Neo, and Lux. As for the others, he didn't bother to notify them, it would only add needless trouble. Dad, why did you call us? Liam, who received the notification, immediately arrived. It should be because of the trouble we caused, Lux behind him muttered, seeing the notification in front of his father. Neo, who listlessly came inside, just found a seat, waiting for what his father had for him. The assembly is in three days later. I want you to come with me. Taking his sons was mainly to broaden their horizons. Especially for Liam, so that in the future, when he wanted to retire, he could confidently leave everything to him. As for Neo, it was to give him some motivation to move forward. Furthermore, Neo also had every bit of information in the abyss, maybe it would be useful. For Lux, it was to beat this brat so that he would make less trouble in the future. Pushing the new currency was this brat's idea. Now, trouble kept coming like a tide, leaving him, time to relax. Lux seemed to feel his look and smiled helplessly. Don't worry, Dad. We'll be with you, Alux muttered. Just prepare well, don't embarrass me. I got it. Uh. Three days later, Maximus and his three sons quietly left the outpost. What Maximus didn't know is that behind him, his wives, children, in-laws, and grandchildren saw them leaving. I hope nothing happens to you, Sky vowed. If something really happened to Maximus, Sky would surely make everyone pay for it. Even if she couldn't do it in her lifetime, she had all the time in her next life to do it, if not, then, just another life. As for Amara, she just clenched her fist, looking at her husband's fading back. She swore once something happened, she would make them know why they called her the most vengeful battle goddess. The others also looked serious, each in their own thoughts. In the Ethereum Citadel In a mobile fortress comparable to the grandness of the city of Arcana, huge structures with different elements representing each apex sovereign stood tall. In an inconspicuous teleportation array, for people suddenly appeared. Is this the Ethereum Citadel? Lux muttered as he excitedly looked around. The Ethereum Citadel is where the central power of the whole Ethereum realm lived. Over a thousand powerhouses from various continents lived here. It was also the guarantee for all the beings living here. It's their last line of defense. Once it falls, then they can just close their eyes and wait for death. The Ethereum Citadel is a mobile stronghold responsible for eliminating all danger that would be detrimental to all beings living here. It mainly hunted Tier 9 Abyss Monsters and Mutated Abyss Monsters, especially the mutated ones. There was once a mutated Abyss Monster that reached Tier 9. After destroying thousands of outposts and dozens of cities, the Ethereum Citadel moved forward as thousands of Apex Sovereigns swarmed over, fighting for their lives. Even then, over a hundred casualties were needed to kill the mutated Abyss Monster. Uh, let's go, quit dawdling! Liam yelled, seeing that their father was already walking far ahead. Egg oh, Lux pouted a little but continued to walk around lazily. Looking at the towering aura of wealth, he wished he had the strength to rob them all. And you too, Neo. Do you want me to drag you? Don't worry about me, brother, Neo just shook his head and walked at a turtle's pace. Liam felt his blood pressure rising watching these two brothers of his. Seeing they didn't listen, Liam had enough. Lifting their clothes, he dragged them forcefully. A brother, don't be indecent. Lux hurriedly said, looking at his posture. However, Liam didn't seem to hear anything and continued to drag them to his father. Don't bother, just relax your body and think you're getting carried by the waves. Neo squinted his eyes as he propped himself up on the ground. A sigh. My image. Lux also gave up as he covered his eyes in despair. Maximus, who saw this, could only helplessly shake his head. These brats, I said don't embarrass me. Fortunately, the Ethereum Citadel is also covered with a spatial array like the one in the city of Arcana. Every step they took, there was a spatial movement, covering dozens of kilometers. After a few minutes of walking, they reached the center of the stronghold. Unlike the others that had the feature of Ethereum realm architectures, the building in front of him looked like it was naturally born out in the Abyss realm. As Liam, Neo, and Lux looked at it, they couldn't help but feel sucked into an endless abyss. 
Fortunately, their cultivation skills came to the rescue as they quickly came to their senses. Uh, on top of the abyss-like building, Rakasha who saw the whole thing couldn't help but nod in satisfaction. I, I didn't expect there was such a good seedling, he muttered, looking at the three. This building, the Abyssal Apex Sanctum, is created using the finest materials they got from the periphery of the Abyss Source layer. It was crafted by the top craftsmen from all of the Ethereum realm, taking a few epics to build it. Its only function is to blend with the Abyss to be the Abyss. Thus, those with weak wills who took a glance at it would fall into the Endless Abyss, never getting out in their lifetime. Thus, seeing three kids break the effect like it was nothing, he couldn't help but be amazed. As for Maximus, who was not affected and even seemed to look at the building with interest, Raskasha just shook his head. Being able to fight and even injure an apex sovereign, if Maximus didn't have this capability, then it's better not to come here. After all, the weak have no rights. This is also the only reason he decided to convene a discussion. After all, a new currency can be big or small, depending on his whims. If he didn't care about it, those guilds could take care of it on their own. If he took an interest in it, it would be like a snowball going down a mountain. He only wondered if Maximus could withstand the pressure. After all, setting up a new currency in the abyss is like setting up a country in a wasteland. It may seem useless and a waste of effort, but those with foresight will see it as a declaration of war. I hope you don't disappoint me. Uh. Soon, Maximus and his sons were led inside as they waited for others. Dad, you don't seem to be nervous, Liam suddenly asked, noticing their father's expression. Uh, what's there to be nervous about? At most, tear down the new currency, Maximus shrugged. Uh, Dad, don't be too pessimistic, you can do this. Lux cheered loudly. This is his dream, and now that it's within arm's reach, Lux can't just give up. Furthermore, he trusts his omnipotent father can resist the pressure. Uh, what about just releasing all their scandals? They should shut up by then, Neo suggested carelessly. He can deduce deep secrets that many don't know about with all kinds of information he gathered. Once this was released, these apex sovereigns and top guilds would be fighting on their own. By then, they could develop freely, as long as they were a little low-key. Oh, what are you thinking? You're getting us killed, Liam knocked his brother's head at such an absurd idea. Spreading these big shot scandals? No matter how thick their father is, he can't protect them from the effects of such an action. As for secretly spreading it, that would be impossible. Under all divination and peeping across time and space, they would be exposed faster than they can speak. Don't worry too much, I will still do my best regardless, Maximus said, calming them down. Maximus knew the coming discussion was not about the new currency at all. It is about what he can give and show. It is how many profits he needs to share and can keep. It will be based on how much strength he can show. As for the launch of the shadow coins or a new currency, it was already a sure thing. Why would powerhouses need to bother and convene such a troublesome gathering if not? These past few years of delay were merely a test to see how such a currency would work. If the result is lower than expected, this assembly would never even happen. Now it seems to pass their test and arouses their appetite, it's time to bite a piece of the pie. And now the test will be how much profit I can keep. Chapter 272 Powerhouse Assembly Soon after a few hours, all those invited to the assembly arrive. A puppet came into their room, inviting them to the conference room. Under the guidance of the puppet, Maximus and his sons quickly arrive at the conference room. Suddenly, an unprecedented pressure falls onto Maximus, causing him to frown. Fully activating his domain, he tried to resist the pressure as he looked around. Hundreds of apex sovereigns from different guilds and organizations look at him with interest. The most famous Ethereum Gold Chamber of Commerce was the most powerful economically. Origin Arcana Institute, the breeding ground of almost all apex sovereigns in the world. Ethereum Embassy, the continental government of all mortal beings. Lorekeeper Guild, the holder of all knowledge and history. Chaotic Marine Guild, the holder of most seagoing ships, moving like a continent across the chaotic sea. Colossal Gladiators, an organization of battle maniacs who own and run almost all the battle arenas in the world. Quantum Transit Consortium, the biggest hand that holds all teleportation arrays in the world. Pantheon Inventors, the largest craftsman organization in the world, producing everything from the simplest daily items to the most complicated alchemical and mechanical items. Gastronomic Federation, which owns the widest land and supplies almost all the food in the world. Looking at all the super guilds and organizations before him, he couldn't help but pause a little. Looking at his sons in the back, almost crushed by pressure. 
He flared his domain up a notch and dispersed the pressure around the room. A pleased to meet you all, I'm Maximus Shadowcrest, Maximus introduced. At Maximus's introduction, the silence in the room continued, but the pressure was no longer present. Besides the Apex Sovereigns in the room, there is also a bunch of Tier 8 and Tier 7 who mostly managed to come to experience. Maximus even sees Denise who disappeared decades ago. It seemed that she had come to the Abyss earlier, so he didn't see her. Looking at Maximus, Denise was a little shocked. Decades ago, a problem suddenly cropped up within the guild, requiring her to go into the Abyss. Because of the rush, she didn't have the time to say goodbye to Maximus. Looking at the man who dared to dirty her, Denise was embarrassed and joyful for a while. However, looking at the solemn room, she held herself. Ah, all right, sit down. Let's begin the discussion, Rakasha says, breaking the silence. Maximus nodded and took his embarrassed sons to sit. And now that you are all here, let's talk about the currency that Maximus Shadowcrest introduced. Most people here found such a change disturbing and almost causing chaos. But now, can you tell me why that is so? Raksha started. Your Excellency, what this ignoble existence just did is set a precedence for chaos, like setting fire in the forest. In the future, if left untouched, such a currency that others can arbitrarily control would lead to serious problems, George, a Tier 9 Apex Sovereign and one of the leaders of the Unity Bank Alliance stated. Although it is not up to par with the likes of the Ethereum Gold Chamber of Commerce, it's still one of the top organizations. Do you have anything to say? Rakasha looks at Maximus. Your Excellency, we should immediately terminate such an existence. Bringing instability to our already precarious situation is presumptuous, George continued, not waiting for Maximus to answer. However, Rakasha ignored it and looked at Maximus. Your Excellency, I'd say this gentleman is talking nonsense. A starting a fire in a forest? A what I did was adding a fire of hope, a light of change to help us in our fight in the abyss, Maximus sharply answers. However, George seemed not to accept his answer and tried using his strength to put pressure on him. Unfortunately for him such pressure is useless. It even tempered Maximus's domain a little, making it stronger and more solid. I oh, adding a fire of hope? What do you mean? Trinks, from the Holy Elephant tribe, one of the leaders of the Gastronomic Federation, asks with interest. Truthfully, top organizations like them held no interest in such a pointless assembly. However, Rakasha still needed to be given face, so they took time to come. Trinks looked at the brat who appeared to have something to say, wanting to know his thoughts. Before answering this question, I would like to ask, what is our goal in staying here in the abyss? Maximus asks in return. To slow down and to protect the Ethereum realm from invasion, a tier 8 powerhouse answered confidently without waiting for others to speak. Do you agree with what he said? Maximus asks as he looked around. Seeing none of them spoke in opposition, he continued. A preventing? A protecting? Is that all? His words seemed to strike a chord as they froze a little. A what do you mean? One of them asked in confusion. Did anyone think about expelling or even conquering? Just the first battle and we already lost. A with such a passive goal, how can we have the passion to fight? Maximus said with a mocking smile. Hearing the words, they couldn't help but fall into deep thought. However, reality is reality, not just something some words can change. Sneering at Maximus, their aura flared up and looked at him intently. Ahe, so what about expelling and conquering? If we had that kind of strength, we would have done so long ago. That's right, such a ridiculous idea. Do you know how much sacrifice we need to reach here? Billions upon billions get buried here every epoch, do we not even think about fighting back? Uh, how have we tried, but it led to more lives being lost. Uh, so many lives were lost, and you tell us such a thing as if we are weak-willed individuals who have been cowering in a little corner? Brat, you better return to where you came from and be down to earth. The crowd looked at Maximus as if wanting to eat him. What a joke! Expelling? Conquering? Hearing such a grand idea seems fresh. However, such elementary tricks and ideas were ridiculous. Uh, why not? The sacrifice is indeed big, but so what? Do we just give up like that? Do we just leave it at that? Are you satisfied with the result? Each of his questions seems to stab them with a knife as they grit their teeth, looking at him. Is this hairless brat who has lived less than a thousand years qualified to point at them? Oh, what do you know? You've only been here for less than a hundred years. How dare you speak such big words? Ahe, this time was enough. 
I enough for what? I enough to be promoted to executioner, the highest status after killing an abyss monster. I enough to set up an outpost that could sail in the purgatory or even the source layer. I enough to set up thousands of little shelters for our compatriots to thrive. I enough to set up a storm that gives me the right to stand here. The indignant crowd immediately shuts up upon hearing the list of what Maximus did. Less than a hundred years to accomplish all of that? Maximus is indeed permitted to speak such words. In the thousands or millions of years they have been here, they didn't even achieve half of what Maximus did. Speaking of this, this brat is indeed amazing, being able to do all this in such a short span of time. Of course, Maximus could only do it because of the system and, more importantly, the source of abyss materials in the Myriad World Mall. Otherwise, establishing an outpost, setting up shelters, becoming famous enough to be here, Maximus can only dream about it. Uh, all right, you've already said enough, Trink says, breaking the silence. Until now, people from top guilds and organizations didn't speak. Only those second and third rates dared to argue with Maximus. For them, Maximus was merely a rising star who hadn't grown yet, like an elementary student showing off in a sports event in front of middle school students. Although it's indeed amazing for them who have already seen much of the world, it was nothing. Even Denise, who was with the Lorekeeper Guild, had the time to blink and flirt with Maximus from afar. Although it is said that the strength of the Lorekeeper Guild is in the hundreds or even in the thousandth place compared to others, it was only when it came to strength. The members of this guild were a bunch of nerds who didn't like to fight. If they had time, it's better to dissect more monsters or tinker with more inventions. Still, being a top guild standing shoulder to shoulder with the giants, they had what it takes. You've said this and that, but you still haven't said what you mean by adding a hope of fire. A what about expelling or conquering? According to your tone, you seem to have a plan? It seems that the currency we are discussing has something to do with it? Trinks asked one by one, seeing the crowd's silence. Chapter 273 Mysterious Dimensional Merchant Hearing what Trinks said, the crowd went silent and looked at Maximus with inquiry. If Maximus really had a plan to help them in their fight in the abyss, then everything would be different. Earlier, they thought of pressuring Maximus first to stop him from having a hand in the new currency. They didn't want a brat of lower strength to be at the same height as them. After kicking out Maximus, they would form an alliance and manage this new unified currency. Truthfully, they were sick of the Ethereum world's will, taking cuts from everywhere. Besides, the cut from condensing Abyss Origin, absorbing crystal merits for promotion and transportation of every material and cargo from the Ethereum realm. The Ethereum world still cut taxes on doing business, more specifically the currency, crystal merits. Crystal merits dissipate over time. Without the preservation of the Ethereum world's will, it will dissipate in just a few days. However, as the Ethereum world's will preserves it, it also took out some as a service fee. Although it's barely 0.1%, which was negligible for many. This was a significant amount for them, who earned trillions at every turn. Most individuals didn't notice this, but for such a humongous organization, it looks like money is leaking. In the past, many of them tried to introduce a currency for circulation. If successful, they can quickly consume excess crystal merits, thereby promoting many individuals in advance. First, they tested magic crystals, the most used currency in Ethereum realm. Unfortunately, it's not cost-effective. Transporting such currency from Ethereum realm is more expensive than the loss they got from the natural dissipation of crystal merits. Second, they tried creating a currency, like metal, paper, alchemy-based, mechanical-based, etc. Unfortunately, it also failed. These things are either too expensive to make or too easy to imitate. They also thought of hunting those who dared to imitate the currencies. However, the damn culprit was among them. How would they dare to prohibit that? Isn't that nonsense? They can only produce more money and earn more before everything ended. As for digital currency, it can't work in this environment. Without all-time connections between outposts and cities, who can trust them? Today, their balance is in billions, the next day, it would be in thousands. Even if you complain, who's to say you didn't spend it? Who can guarantee the bank or the individual is in the right? A contract? If they had money to give a contract to every individual, then why would they still bother to set up a new currency? All in all, their scheme of putting up a new currency is a bust. No one could solve it, even with all the knowledge and powerful individuals in the Ethereum realm. This is where the shadow coins come in line. It's cheap and impossible to imitate. 
Shadow coins are only made from materials commonly found in the Ethereum realm and the Abyss realm. If only compared to materials, then gold and silver coins were more expensive to make. Yet, after months and years of trial and error, they failed to imitate such a currency. They were already able to create a one-to-one -one ratio of the currency down to its every law and origin, yet they still failed. The unique frequency that the shadow coins had couldn't be reproduced. Those who were a little more careful can spot it instantly. This is also why they were so frenzied, opposing Maximus in every way. After bringing him down, they can obtain the unique money-forging technique. By then, they can create their currency and solve all their problems. They didn't know Maximus depended on his system to create this currency. Using his domain and connection to the system, Maximus was able to harmonize the shadow coin to the same frequency as the origin of his system. As a remnant of a tier 12 treasure, how can they even dream of imitating it? Uh, taking a deep breath, Maximus thought of his following words. Is anyone curious about how I quickly built an outpost? Or how I got here? Maximus started. Oh, what do you mean? They questioned. Of course, they sure heck are curious. Many of the Apex sovereigns in the room have long become suspicious of Maximus since the release of the Shadow Coins. From Maximus's unknown source of wealth and materials, even his strength is mysterious. However, after rigorous investigation, all of this seemed like thin air. There is no point where it appears like a puff of smoke suddenly appearing. I have come into contact with another dimension, Maximus said lightly. However, his words were not light at all. All of them stood up as the pressure in the room shot up to another level. Almost all those with weaker strength than an apex sovereign were unconscious. Uh, what dimension are you in contact with? Rakasha said coldly. This was not a joking matter. This is an intervention of another dimension. They know for a fact that their home is simply a pebble in the sea when it comes to the outside. Just a slightly stronger dimension can crush them like it's nothing. I could not tell you that, before Maximus finished speaking, the pressure increased again. This time, his strength can no longer hold it. Multiple items in his body begin to work, resisting the pressure. Ahem, worry not, I signed a dimensional origin contract, they would never reveal our dimensional coordinates as long as I keep my mouth shut, Maximus hurriedly said. The individuals in the room also have little knowledge about outside dimensions. After all, they often sent various souls to explore the way, aka the virtual world. Naturally, they know what a dimensional origin contract is. A dimensional origin contract is the highest level contract between different dimensions. Its enforcing power could even bring an entire dimension to oblivion after disobeying the terms of the contract. Knowing this, they also calmed down a little. Looking around, they saw the individuals they bought knocked out cold. After despising their weak strength, they hurriedly healed them as they returned to sit. Rakasha also calmed down, looking at him seriously, asking for more information. A what I came into contact with is a top-tier dimensional merchant, Maximus declared. As they also hope to monopolize the business in our world, they dare not to expose it. As for harm, they were one of the top organizations out there. If they didn't want to accumulate karma just for some petty profit, Maximus lied without a bit of fluctuation. He already thought about what to do when he came here. Maximus could even say that he prepared a plan before even coming to the Abyss Realm. No matter how low-key he is, his system would be exposed sooner or later. It's just a matter of time. He just accelerated the time by releasing the shadow coins. However, such a plan was needed. To collect enough money or crystal merits, he needed to artificially expose the system. Of course, he needed some cover, and a dimensional merchant was just appropriate. After advancing to tier 8, he could then spread the myriad system mall in the guise of the same merchant. Is so all the material and money were exchanged by you to this unknown dimensional merchant? A yes, my wealth, the source of materials, even my training manual was gotten from them, Maximus answered without missing a beat. Hearing this, the crowd went into an uproar once again. Even his sons couldn't help but nod. All the weird actions of their father were all connected by now. Their massive source of wealth and training resources must be exchanged with this dimensional merchant. As for the training manuals, Liam, Neo, and Lux believe their father only got inspiration from them. Especially for the origin, they wouldn't believe that their father just bought it, even if they were beaten to death. Training with the origin, they can feel that it was deeply connected with their father. There was no other hint of impurities hinting that others intervened with it. They guessed it was their father's natural talent, being able to create such an amazing cultivation manual. 
After all, even through all of this revelation, they still believe their father a hundred percent. After a few minutes of silence, processing the information Maximus revealed, they finally asked Maximus a pressing question. Uh, can we also trade with this dimensional merchant? Uh, no, a Maximus said straightforwardly. You mean to be a third party and trade with us and them using shadow coins? Raksha said after piecing together what Maximus said. This should be what Maximus meant when he said adding hope of fire with the help of the new currency. All the arguments earlier were to preheat the revelations later on. I can't do anything about it, they only want to contact me and no one else. Maximus shook his head helplessly. However, the individuals in the room were smart, they didn't believe a word that Maximus had just said. What does it mean that they only wanted to contact you? A hairless brat with such an ant-like strength? It likely means that you wanted to monopolize this business channel. Ah, oh, what a sly little fox. They cursed in silence. Chapter 274 Result of Assembly can you tell us more specifically about the dimensional merchant? I like the range of products they sell. How frequently do they contact and trade with you? What about the mode of transportation? How do they deliver the product to you? And more importantly, how do you conduct transactions? What is the method of payment? Rakasha asks one by one. The others also listen intently. They wanted to know more about this mysterious dimensional merchant. What if they could directly bypass this brat and trade with such a patron themselves? Uh, for specific information, I can't tell you, according to the contract. Maximus shook his head. A tisk they quickly clicked their tongue hearing his answer. But for the products they sell, I can still share one or two. Telling them too much information at one time will increase the possibility of his system being exposed, which he doesn't want. Then, can you tell us about it? Rakasha asks, understanding Maximus's situation. As for the possibility of Maximus lying, it's not that important. As long as they get the key information, they can go back and investigate it later. Truthfully, I don't know the range of what they can or can't sell. But aside from seemingly having everything available in our world, they also have unique products from different dimensions. The crowd in the room frowned, processing what Maximus had said. Maximus basically said nothing but also everything. Meaning they can only probe further if they want to know more. I, oh, I also heard that they sell tier 10 resources and products, Maximus shrugged as if he just remembered it. Hearing that the dimensional merchant Maximus is in contact with his selling tier 10 products, the room turned silent, like a void. Tier 10 realm. The thing that countless powerhouse dream day and night. The thing that kept them fighting for countless epics. Hearing that they were in contact with at least a tier 10 civilization, they couldn't help but feel fear and excitement at the same time. Is this confirmed? Rakasha asked seriously. I'm not sure, but very highly likely, a Maximus didn't deny nor confirm. The information he provided should be enough to catch fish. Anything more would harm him and his plan for the future. Uh. A few months later, in the Shadow Hunter outpost, Maximus was in his residence, meditating as if waiting for something. A few months had passed since the high level assembly, and the process was easier than he thought. After a few days of discussion, they came to terms with Maximus. Firstly, the shadow coins would be solely owned by him. Maximus didn't need to pay any tax or hidden fees. The methods of making the currency were also kept by himself. However, Maximus needed to ensure not to abuse this right. Otherwise, they would personally take action and rehabilitate him. Secondly, it was about the trading rights for the unknown dimensional merchant. Each top guild could freely trade with him as an intermediary. This was the problem causing the assembly to last for a few days. After Maximus listed what could be bought and the prices, the crowd went wild and taught him how to be a decent human being. At the start, the price he listed was at the Ethereum realm price standard. But those old foxes seemed like a bunch of enlightened sages. They didn't believe anything Maximus had said and told him to state the actual price. It came to the point where they even openly threatened Maximus. Although they didn't know if Maximus had the backing of the unknown dimensional merchant, they didn't care. In the face of profits, anything is negligible. Even Rakasha, who had always been impartial, didn't side with him. After hearing that they were trading tier 10 items, his heart went on fire, and he wanted to acquire one. Although they couldn't advance to tier 10 because of the constraints of their world. Buying a tier 10 weapon or two would still be a massive boost to their strength. What about the Abyss? 
Heck, they might even devour this piece of shit and advance the Ethereum realm to tier 10 dimension. Finally, after a few days of back and forth, Maximus had to grit his teeth and lower the price, thus reducing his income. Initially, he could earn at least 10 to 100 times the price difference. As a result, he could only earn about twice or thrice the price difference. Fortunately, there were still rarer items that he could price arbitrarily. The third thing they discussed was the expansion of outposts and shelters in the Abyss Realm. With more outposts and shelters, they could deploy those uncountable Tier 6 individuals rotting in the Ethereum Realm. In the past, due to the lack of a safe place in the Abyss, this could not be implemented. After all, just the Tier 7 powerhouses already overcrowded their space. Now, with the Dimensional Merchant, they didn't worry about the source of material and could build more outposts and shelters unscrupulously. Regardless of cost, they decided to push the Abyss horizontally and, in turn, earn more profits. As for the lack of fighting power of these Tier 6 individuals, this is not a problem. A larger number means more power. If a hundred Tier 6 individuals can't compare to a Tier 7, what about a thousand? What about ten thousand? What about a hundred thousand? What about a million? One has to know that the ratio of Tier 6 to Tier 7 powerhouses is like a drop of water to an ocean. An ant can drown an elephant, much less a bunch of powerful individuals. For this, Maximus didn't say much. Anyway, he was not the one spending money, even he could earn much more. Now, the shadow coins, or should he say Ethereum coins, were already being widely promoted. Since they already had a new currency, why would they still use the depreciating crystal merits? Unfortunately, even with the guarantee of top guilds and organizations, the spread of Ethereum coins is slow. After all, all those past trials had already taken a toll on them. What if, in the future, such a currency fell? By then, they wouldn't even know where to cry. As for the name change, it was the suggestion of the Ethereum Council. After all, if a currency represented an individual, then where would they put their face? Isn't this admitting they were not as good as the other party? Didn't that mean that the Ethereum Council didn't have control anymore? Maximus agreed to this without much thought. After all, shadow coins were indeed too personalized. While he was in deep thought, a knock came on the door. A guild leader, a group of individuals wanted to see you, Andrew stated. Bill? The first prey is here? Maximus muttered silently. Lead them to the audience chamber, Maximus instructed. Uh. Audience chamber. Maximus sat in a chair, eager to see who would be the first brave one to take the bait. These few months, no one was brave enough to trade with him. Although Maximus's source was tempting it was full of unknowns. They didn't know if they would be cheated out of money. So, most of them adopted a wait and see attitude. After all, to trade with Maximus, one had to pay first, and the total transaction must reach a hundred quadrillion crystal merits. This was a substantial amount. Although they were top guilds or organizations with a significant flow of money, they didn't dare to spend that much at a time. Maximus was also helpless in this regard. He set this limit to avoid being too busy. If it were only trillions of crystal merits at a time. With so many guilds and organizations out there, he would be exhausted just transporting and exchanging the products. More importantly, these trillions were nothing to him. With thousands of shelters, famous products, and Ethereum coins, Maximus could earn two to three quadrillion every month doing nothing. This amounted to tens of trillions every day. Why waste time earning a few extra trillion? Of course, mainly because he didn't want to expose his system too much. Frequent transactions meant frequent exposure. Furthermore, just thinking about it, earning tens of quadrillions with just a wave of his hand was quite good. As for paying first, it was natural. Maximus only had less than a hundred quadrillion in his system. If he traded with goods on the spot, it would be troublesome. What if the transaction reached hundreds of quadrillions or even quintillions? Maximus could only delay the transaction, leading to more problems. Didn't that imply that the dimensional merchant wasn't that strong? Or perhaps there was a technical problem imposing a limit. Either way, many issues would arise, jeopardizing his credibility. Maximus could only sigh and be thankful that someone finally had the guts to initiate a transaction. After this, many should clear their doubts and begin trading with him. By then, saving 100 quintillion for his advancement would be a piece of cake. He could even reserve one for his family, ensuring they would never be separated when he returned to the Ethereum realm. This fish was indeed his lucky star. He wondered if he should offer some discount to this courageous customer. As he was thinking who's the stupid fish that took the first bait. 
the door slammed open as a beautiful angel flew into his embrace. A Maximus Chapter 275 Maximus x Denise Denise? Maximus muttered, looking blankly at the woman in his arms. A what? Don't you miss me? Denise winked. Because her mother dragged her after the assembly. She didn't have time to talk to Maximus. To meet Maximus, Denise had to stand up and crazily advertise their relationship with those old fogies. I miss you very much. Maximus pinched her cheeks. This little chick dared to eat him yet left hastily without reminding him. I is Adora Celestine, one of the leaders of the Lorekeeper Guild. Nice to meet you, Maximus Shadowcrest, a kind-looking lady greeted him. It's my pleasure, Maximus smiled politely, still hugging Denise in his arms. I see that my daughter took a liking to you, Isadora teased a little. A mother. Denise yelled shyly. I like her too, a Maximus smiled, tightening his hug with Denise. Ah hee hee, your family is really greedy, stealing my daughter and granddaughter, Isadora said, looking at him meaningfully. First, her granddaughter Ella, and now even this brat she raised to be the successor of the guild went awry. Thank you for your compliment, Maximus didn't shy away and thanked shamelessly. What about stealing other daughters and granddaughters? Isn't this a natural thing? Holding the fragrant woman in his arms. Maximus can only say that the Celestine family is a group of great beauties. Ah, oh, what a shameless brat, Isadora sighed in defeat. By the way, why are you here? Maximus asked as he invited them to sit, finally breaking his hug with Denise. Ah, oh, we want to buy something from that dimensional merchant behind you, Isadora said. Ayo? Hey Do you have a list? Maximus asked directly. Ahem, here, take a look if it's available, Isabella said, giving him the list. Looking at it, Maximus noticed that it was mostly materials used to build a mobile stronghold. By the looks of it, the Lorekeeper Guild is eager to build one of their own. After calculating the cost, the required materials amounted to approximately 130 quadrillion, which means he can earn at least 80 to 90 quadrillion. However, seeing that it was Denise's mother who was conducting the transaction, Maximus decided to give them a bit of a discount, bringing the cost to only over 100 quadrillion. There should be no problem. That's good, Isadora sighed in relief. The guild had long wanted to construct a mobile fortress but was unable to start due to the shortage of materials. Those old fogies in her guild had long been yearning for one so they could study deeper into the abyss. The materials they can study while stationary are severely limited, causing most of their research to stall. Are there other things you want to trade? Is the dimensional merchant behind you exchanging knowledge? Isadora asked hopefully. This is important to them, as wisdom seekers, they were very eager for new knowledge. A yes, but each book of knowledge can only be bound by one person. If you want two or more people to study the same knowledge, you need to buy more copies of the same knowledge. Ah, that's good. Very good. Isadora muttered excitedly. This is good news. It's like hearing a parallel world offering a completely new catalogue of anime. Just as they were getting bored with their world culture, a new one popped up. How can Isadora not be ecstatic? Even the group of apprentice behind were so ecstatic that they nearly jumped in joy. Uh, could you provide me with the prices of each book of knowledge? It's almost the same price as the Ethereum Realm price standard but a little cheaper, Maximus said truthfully. For knowledge, he didn't want to profit much. Although knowledge is indeed priceless, that he can arbitrarily raise the price as he wants. Maximus wanted to contribute to his world, at least not be too greedy in setting the price. A good, good, very good. Isadora smiled like she won the lottery. She even forgot her bit of prejudice against Maximus and his son despite them harming her daughter and granddaughter. Now, she can't wait to empty their guild treasury and offer it to Maximus. This is 300 quadrillion. Uh, besides the money for the materials. You can use the rest to buy 10 copies of each piece of knowledge and their corresponding research apparatus and materials. Isadora eagerly emptied her storage ring and even added her hidden money. A, a dash at Maximus was a little speechless as he looked at Isadora. A what's wrong? Isadora asked, seeing Maximus didn't accept the money. The process? Maximus reminded. In the assembly, he asked them to pay with Ethereum coins when conducting a transaction meaning they first had to exchange currency and then trade with him. Are you sick? It's too troublesome. One of Isadora's apprentices, who had been in the meeting, couldn't help but complain. 
After all, they would pay Maximus regardless, so why would there be this step? Isn't this a brain-damaged operation? Ahem, it's for the ceremonials. Maximus reasoned in embarrassment. This process is really nonsense, but Maximus can do anything with it. He wanted to cultivate the belief in Ethereum coins as a currency. His system mainly absorbs belief regardless of the material. Like the virtual currency in his empire, if Maximus converted it to his system currency. He could earn billions of dimensional coins monthly without using real resources. By now, the value of Ethereum coins is only about a millionth of crystal merits, which is 0.000001 dimensional coins for every Ethereum coin. But if he can fully cultivate its belief, it can reach a 1 to 1 or even 1 to 100 value with dimensional coins. More importantly, if they trade using the Ethereum coins, he can save at least 100 billion for every 100 quadrillion worth of transactions. All in all, trading with Ethereum coins is a must, even Maximus had to be embarrassed about it. Denise saw his adamant look and just rolled her eyes. However, knowing what Maximus wanted, Denise tried to smooth out the conflict. Mother, just do as he said, it won't waste much time anyway. Uh, all right, do I exchange the Ethereum coins with you, or do I still need to go to a bank? Isadora compromised, seeing her traitorous daughter. Uh, no, no, just with me, a Maximus smiled. Taking the 300 quadrillion crystal merits, he quickly retrieved 3 trillion Ethereum coins from his storage dimension. Here, Maximus said happily. As they watched his incomprehensible actions, their mouths twitched with complaints in their minds. Uh, can I trade now? Isadora said impatiently. Even if her enthusiasm for new knowledge was doused with cold water, thinking that Maximus was a bit unreliable. What if Maximus became greedy and ran off with her guild's money? Isadora even thought of having her daughter distance herself from such a lunatic. But seeing her daughter's love-struck look, she could only shake her head. A yes, you can get the items after a month, Maximus said confidently, taking back the Ethereum coins he had just given. A just a month? Isadora was a little shocked. She thought that she would have to wait for a few more years. Who knew that it was only a few months? Then I look forward to it, Isadora said, quickly calming down. The days passed as Denise decided to stay with him. Even under the relentless persuasion of her mother. Denise was stubborn and wanted to be with him. Not seeing him for a few decades deepened Denise's affection for him to an uncontrollable degree. With no other choice, Isadora could only leave her daughter in Maximus' care. Soon, Denise quickly integrated with his family. However, with great affection, Denise didn't join others in fighting but decided to stick with him. Day and night, it seemed that Denise transformed into a love demon, not leaving his side. Uh. While Maximus was suffering in happiness. The Lorekeeper Guild was in suspense as they nervously waited for their package. The other guilds and organizations also watched eagerly, wondering if they could successfully conduct a transaction. Uh. Soon, a month had passed. On the patio, Maximus and Denise were flirting happily. Uh, Maximus, when would you marry me? Denise asked, looking deeply into his eyes. I want it now, but your family is a bit traditional. Maximus sighed. Denise's mother, Isadora, deeply forbids them from special activities that Maximus suffered greatly. Isadora wanted Maximus to return to the Ethereum realm and officially marry Denise before anything could happen. A warning from an Apex Sovereign is simply frightening, especially if it was his future mother-in-law. Maximus can only be a turtle and suffer, Denise pestering this past month. Now, he understands his son, Max, suffering. Just thinking of a succubus seducing you day and night, but you can't do anything. His, it must have been tough? Fortunately, he still had his wives, where he could vent his frustrations. Ahihi, my mother is really strict, we can only wait. Denise laughed a little and teased Maximus, touching him everywhere. A stop, Maximus held her hands in frustration. A little bit more, and he would unleash his inner demons, disregarding the advice of her future mother-in-law. Just touching it shouldn't be forbidden, Denise said with a hot breath behind his ears. Really? Maximus' body perks up as he asks attentively. Don't you want to? Denise said, licking her lips. It's just touching, so it should be all right. Maximus said like an innocent child who was ready for mischief. How then let me show you the way?